So let's take a look at the enhanced input uh, system in Unreal Engine. Uh, the enhanced input system is the, the new way to handle input, uh, and it's a really, really cool and flexible way of, of doing interesting input things. Uh, but it can be a little bit intimidating to get started with it, and the, the documentation that Epic has on their site, uh, even though it's pretty good, uh, it took me a couple of tries to actually understand how to do something practical with this. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through uh, basically how to create an action, how to create an input mapping context. And basically at the end of it, we're going to have set up the WASD controls for a simple pawn. Uh, and you should be set to uh, continue on uh, making your own uh, cool and interesting inputs. So let's start setting up the uh, kind of the fundamentals for this example. So I am going to start by creating a few blueprint classes. Uh, we start with a player controller. This is where we're going to, going to be accepting the inputs, BP player controller. Uh, I'm going to create a character, which is a type of pawn that can accept input. So we're going to be creating the inputs that the uh, uh, for a character using the enhanced input system, BP character. And then I'm going to create a game mode. Uh, which is going to allow us to spawn into into a world where we have our character and our player controller set up. So I'm calling this BP Game Mode. All right, so I'm opening up the game mode, and here you can see that uh, there are the, the class defaults here. I'm setting the player controller class to our blueprint, uh, the BP player controller here, and I'm setting the default pawn here to the uh, BP character. And then lastly, I'm going to be setting the game mode for this level. I'm going to set that to the BP game mode. And now that I press play, uh, you should see that I spawn into the world. And here in yellow, you can see that we got the BP character blueprint added, uh, the BP game mode, and the BP player controller. So now we have everything. Uh, when I try to move around, pressing the, the arrow keys, nothing happens, or the last keys. So the next thing is we add the, uh, the enhanced inputs. So now that we have everything set up, uh, let's go ahead and create the two, uh, the assets that we need for the inputs. We need the input mapping context. So let's create one of those. The input mapping context is uh, a data table uh, or a data asset that links together, uh, it links together actions that we're gonna create earlier and then inputs. So let's call this uh, input mapping. Uh, and I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to create an input action. And I'm going to call it AC uh, for action. Uh, and I'm going to call it move. So it goes over here. So uh, let's just start by adding the, uh, in the input mapping, uh, we're going to add one entry of, uh, of mappings. We're going to say uh, it's going to be this action. So the AC move action is going to be linked to uh, in, inside of this input mapping table. And if we take a look, we can see we open this up here and we can see that this is uh, letting us pick a letter or pick, pick an input. So we could have a gamepad or a keyboard or a mouse. So we're going to uh, link this to W because we're making the vast uh, kind of inputs. And here we have two things. We have the triggers so if we add a trigger we can say when does this trigger do we want this to trigger when the a button is pressed or if it, when it's held they are pressed or if it's down or do we want it to pulse so this is one of the uh, kind of the more cool things about the new enhanced system you can do uh, things like that uh, much easier than you could in the old system so we're going to say when the button is down we want this to trigger uh, and we don't need to add any modifiers uh, to this just yet so uh, now what we've done is we've created a link, we've hooked up this, uh, we've created an entry in the mappings list inside of the input mapping. Uh, we added the input action AC move, uh, and we've added the W button to, uh, to trigger when the W button is down. So uh, all we have to do now is we need to make this, uh, make this do something. So we go into our player controller and uh, Turn this off. We go into our player controller. Let's take a look at the event graph. And on begin play, uh, we need to get the local player input uh, input sus subsystem. So, uh, so we what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be registering the input context. So all of the inputs that we've uh, all of these inputs that we've uh, defined, and in our case, this is just the W uh, the W input. 
uh, that triggers the input action uh, AC move. Uh, we want to register that so to make it available. So we do re register uh, input. No, so it's not called register. So this is something that I uh, uh, yeah I run into problems with sometimes. It's called add input context, yeah, add mapping context. So here, basically, what we want to do is we want to say. Uh, that when the game starts, the player controller triggers its begin play logic. We want to add a mapping to context, and add mapping context is a function on the enhanced input local player subsystem. And we want to say that the input context that we uh, are going to be kind of registering or adding is the uh, is the input mapping asset that we defined over here. And if we take a look at that again, we can see that uh, it has one action, AC move, and this action gets triggered. Uh, when the W button is down. So now if we wanted to test to see if this actually uh, works, uh, we can go and we can right click here and we can just type in AC underscore move. So here we can see that uh, I'm going to just do a print string here uh, and we're going to print when the action gets uh, triggered. Here we go and it's going to say hello when it's triggered. So now we press play and I press the W button, and you can see when I press the button and I hold it down, uh, you can see that the hello message is being printed on the screen. So now what we've done is we've added uh, we've added this uh, a mapping context which we just created. We created an action and we defined how the action should be uh, how it should be triggered, and we printed a string with the uh, uh, yeah a hello world string uh, to test it. So the next step is going to be expanding our input action, the move action, uh, so that it can actually do a couple of more things. Uh, we want the input action to be triggered when we uh, touch all of the, uh, the WAST keys. And we can actually do that with the same input action. So if you take a look at the action here, uh, the first thing that you see is that the value that uh, is being that is being generated by this action. So whenever we uh, we press the button, you can see it's giving us a Boolean value. So it's going to tell us is the button down or not. Uh, so this is uh, this is pretty useful for for many things. But what we want to do is we want to uh, we want to do a positive or a negative number. We want to see are you moving forward or are you moving backwards, and then we want to map that both to the W and the S key, and then eventually we're going to do in the A and uh, and the D key uh, for left and right. So let's switch this over to an, a 2D axis. And you can see that the moment that I did this, uh, we, we can see some changes here in, the, uh, in the, uh, the event here where we're kind of responding to the action. You can see that uh, we're not, let's just take a look at this again. So if I go back to the, to the Boolean value, you can see that the action value here that's getting outputted is uh, a, Boolean, uh, a Boolean value. But now that I move it over to the, the 2D vector, you can see that the data type here for the action value has changed. And I can go in here and I can break this because now this is a, this is a vector too. So, uh, but pressing the W button doesn't really, uh, isn't really, it's just generating a, a, a Boolean, uh, yeah, basically just generating a Boolean value. So let's just see what happens if we plug this into the print statement uh, and we just run this uh, as is. So now you can see that whenever I press the W button, I'm getting one on the screen. Uh, so this is great. Uh, I am going to, uh, so I know that I'm getting a positive number here uh, whenever I press the, the forward button. But what I want to happen is when I press the, uh, the backward button or the S button, I want us to get a, a negative number. So we're moving on the X axis. So you can see down here, uh, we're eventually gonna create a character that uh, goes back and forth. You can see that uh, when I press for the W button, I'm getting a positive X value. So now uh, let's jump in here again. Let's add another input for the move action. And we're going to say S and look for the S button here. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make the trigger be when the button is down or when the action is down. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a modifier. So the modifiers are, are pretty cool. So they allow us to take the input action, uh, or take the input, va uh, the value from the action. So in our case, uh, it's a vector, uh, it's a vector two. Uh, and it's going to allow us to uh, do things like just basically modify it like this is a modifier. So the modifier that we want is that whenever we press the S key, 
we know that by default, if we don't do anything, we're getting a positive number, we're getting a one. But we want to add a modifier called negate, and negate is basically inverting it. So once we do that, we go ahead and uh, now we have the input action mapped to two buttons. We have the W button and the S button. Uh, when the button is down, uh, this is the default behavior. And when the, uh, when the S button is down, uh, when the W button is down, uh, we do the default behavior. When the S button is down, we do the same behavior, but we negate the result. We modify the result. And just as a reminder, we take a look again into the action here. The action returns a value of, an, uh, of a 2D vector. It basically means that now that we, uh, we play, now that I press W, we get a 1. And when I press S, I get a negative number. So now we're actually ready to uh, uh, implement the other uh, the other two uh, the other two values. But before we do that, let's uh, do a little bit more work and add add in the uh, the character so that we can actually see what we're doing. So uh, we were gonna we were gonna do a little more work on the on the character just so that we can see it. So I'm I'm going to open up the character blueprint here. You can see that uh, it has a collision and. Uh, it has this character movement component, which uh, which we'll use to uh, to move our character. But I'm going to start by adding a sphere, uh, just so that we can visualize it a little bit. Uh, and I'm also going to give it a camera. So uh, and I'm going to move the camera back a little bit, and I'm going to move the rotation of it a little bit like this. So now, without having made any any changes, uh, when I press play, you can see that I have this uh, like my pawn is now visualized with this sphere, and the camera is a little bit a uh, little bit behind behind it. So now uh, we're going to forward our uh, our input into the uh, uh, into the movement of the character. So uh, all we have to do then is within our player controller, we can call the function get control pawn which is going to give us the uh, the pawn that uh, that uh, that's actually kind of controlled by this player controller and earlier we set up the game mode so uh, so the game mode itself sets up the uh, uh, kind of the relationship so we know that the control pawn is going to be the pawn that uh, uh, that we want the character and all we need to do is we do our add movement input here movement input takes a vector 3 so it has an x and y value forward and uh, left and right and then as a z value which is up and down uh, we don't want that uh, so we split uh, this one here and now we can feed in the x value so that's going to be the the movement direction here uh, so now we don't we shouldn't really need the, uh, the print statement anymore so now with this wired up we have uh, we should be able to see our character move forwards and backwards is kind of cool. So now that we have the uh, the visualization of this setup, uh, it's time to add the uh, the left and right values. So now that our character is moving back and forth, uh, it's time for us to uh, finish the uh, the VAST or the WASD uh, control scheme. So let's take a look again into our input mapping, and we can see that we've already mapped the uh, the W button and the S button. So let's add two more. Let's add the uh, the D. Uh, so we find that here, that's going to be D, and let's add the A button as well. So that's going to be our left movement. So uh, we do the same thing. We map this to the down action or the down trigger, uh, and I'm going to do it over here as well. So the uh, if we do it like that, uh, now you can see that the W and the D values are the same. Uh, and by default, what's going to happen is when you press this button, uh, you're going to get a positive value, uh, the positive value on the x uh, uh, kind of axis, because by by default, because behind the scenes uh, we're creating this, uh, we're, we're taking a boolean value is the button down or not, and we're mapping it over to a, a, a vector, an x and y vector. So what we need to do is we need to create a new modifier here, and the modifier is called uh, swizzle, swizzle input actions. So uh, if we create this modifier, what this does, if we go into the uh, uh, to the inputs, it's going to take the regular x, y, and c uh, inputs, and it's going to reorder them so the x by default, which which is the thing that comes out of our movement, becomes y, the y becomes 
x and the z stays the z so basically we're moving the uh the input that we get from the from the actual trigger we're moving it over to the y value of the uh, uh of the vector that gets created and we do the same here for the uh let's see uh, modifier swizzle and we make sure that this is set to y x z uh, and let's take a look at what happens there we go so nothing happens right now we still can go back and forth and nothing happens because if we take a look we haven't wired up the uh the y value here so let's press play once again so now i'm pressing the d button and when i press the a button uh i'm going in the same direction and this is because we we forgot that we also need to negate so we had have to add another modifier and this modifier is negating it so now we have the the uh, these kind of three inputs the w s d a the vast uh, controls i probably should have done this in the in that order order w uh, is just by default it just takes the uh, the down button it moves you forward the s has the uh, does the same thing but negates it the d takes the value does the same thing but swizzles the input so it moves the x value that we get when we press the d button and it moves it over to the y uh, value of the vector and then a does the same thing but it also inverts the value so now if we press play everything should be working so we go left i press a we go right i press d forward with uh with w and back with s so that's basically it so we created one action one input action and uh, we mapped it to the input and um, and yeah that's how you set up these um, uh, avast controls with uh with the enhanced input and input mappings